Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time you're watching, with 7 Days to Die 1.0 being released today, I wanted to point out just a few things I found important as a very average casual gamer. So I recorded this on June 22nd during streamer weekend, so some things might change on launch, and there's definitely going to be some things changing with updates in the future. But for now, let's check out the things I found were kind of important to me, and in my opinion, just a couple key things that are being added to the game that I wanted to share with all of you. All right, welcome in. So after you spawn in for the first time, you'll notice in the top right, we no longer have the gather fibers quest. That was the very basic tutorial. It didn't really help a whole heck of a lot, especially for new players. So now we have this new challenge version. We'll go to our tab here and right up here, you see the challenges trophy. If you click on that, you'll see the basics of survival. And this is gonna be your trader quest. We gather your resources. So the first one here is gather resources. Gather 10 plant fibers, 10 wood, gather five small stone, and your reward will be 100 XP. And another helpful tip is if you track the quest, the resources will show up on your map like this. And there we have it. Gather resources is complete. We'll go back up to our trophy. Bada boom, right here. We can click on this, redeem. And we got a little bit of extra bonus XP. So as of the recording, I believe there are like 12 different categories of different style quests. It'll be the trader quests. It'd be the homesteading, survival, killing, crafting. With the new tutorial, the idea is to get the player away from relying so much on just the trader progression of the game and more or less about crafting and surviving on your own to progress through the different ranks. Which leads to the next thing is trader quests. Trader quests are now going to have like nerfed rewards, which will not be as fantastic. But don't worry, you'll be able to craft your next tier of weapons and items. It's going to be pretty awesome to actually have to progress through and not just rely on grinding out trader quests, which is something kind of gets monotonous, so I'm pretty excited about that. All right, up next we have the chesticles. Now we're all pretty much used to the old school secure storage chest system, so now check these guys out. We have these awesome new storage chests that replaces the secure wooden chests. So let's grab some materials here and I'll show you how they work. Now the wood storage crate here only takes 10 wood to craft. Place that bad boy right there. We can customize a bunch of different lines of text. And the cool thing now is if we go inside, you see the amount of slots we have right here. And the first upgrade will be a forged iron. And that only takes 10. And now look at how much more storage we have. Upgrade to the steel chest and we have a ton of storage. We have many lines we can write on. These chests are going to be fantastic. They're cheap to make. And it's going to just change the hoarder's life because I know I'm a loot goblin and hoarding is one of my downfalls. I do like to organize, so this will help out a ton. But off to the next exciting thing, we have armor sets. So instead of having like leather boots and scrap chest armor and iron leggings, so now there are 16 new sets of unique armor. Each set has a different attribute. So first up, we'll look at the lumberjack one. We'll just look at two of them today. So if you look at the description here, be the boss of the lumber yard, increase wood harvest. So this full set of armor will increase your wood harvesting and your stamina usage whenever you're using axes. So not only do we look pretty darn cool, you'll see on the bottom left there, we have an armor bonus active. And if we start swinging this tree here, look how little our stamina goes down, but how much wood we're gathering. And we'll just strip down to our skivvies here. So with a couple wax there, you can see the difference. Stamina usage does decrease when you're wearing a full armor set. So another full armor set we have here just to take a look at will be the Preacher armor. And if we look at the stats on this, a Saint's Comfort and Security reduces the chance of critical injuries by 15% and infection chance by 15%. That is pretty darn handy. And it looks pretty darn cool too, you gotta admit that. So again, there are 16 new sets of unique armor. Be sure to check them out and start building up your classes. So if you're gonna go out and gather resources, maybe throw on the lumberjack outfit. Maybe if you feel like you're gonna go hit up a pretty intense POI, slap on the preacher outfit. You can swap out your outfits to fit whatever adventure you're about to go on. I thought that was pretty cool. But up next, I wanted to check out the new legendary weapon system and tier six crafting. So up next, getting away from trader progression again, is we have a new legendary crafting system, essentially tier six items that you can craft at home. So new tier six crafting requires these new legendary parts. And as you can see here, there is a legendary shotgun crafting bundle and I've got a sniper rifle legendary bundle. So let's crack into the shotgun bundle right here. You can see it gives us a legendary part, some ammo, some shotgun parts, and some nudie magazines. 
And now the new tier 6 shotgun recipe will require one legendary part, spring, duct tape, four steel shotgun parts, we can craft tier 6 weapons now, that is fan flippin' tastic. And now if we take a look at this red bundle, this bundle actually contains the level 6 firearm and its required ammunition, so let's open this up. We got a level 6 sniper rifle, some ammunition, and some rifle world books. That is also a really cool reward. That is something I found really cool is crafting level 6 weapons later on in the game. That's going to become super handy to develop my arsenal. But there's no sense in having such a great arsenal without some wheels to get to our destination. So let's go check out some vehicles. So there's going to be a lot of changes to vehicles, but some of the major ones I wanted to point out. First off, the 4x4 truck. By default, it now has four seats. So if you're going to bring your friends along, that is going to be the truck to get. But also, the gyrocopter is now a two-seater by default, which I think is pretty darn cool. A lot of us play with our partners, a lot of co-op going on, so two-seater to fly around is pretty fantastic. But check out the new skin on the bicycle, man. That is pretty darn cool. And there's going to be a couple new mods, and especially with the bicycle early game, is you can put the vehicle headlight mod on the bike. And look at that, a couple pairs of flashlights. So now when you're cruising around at night, you have a little bit better vision. That is something that's really awesome. But another really cool feature I found is putting on the vehicle expanded seating mod and the plow on this thing. Now you can more easily run into zombies. And this adds two more seats for your friends to go hang out in. That's pretty darn cool. And another feature I thought was pretty cool is now there's vehicle armor mods. So check out that armor. That's pretty much a necessity for people that are bad at gaming like I am. And we crash into a lot of stuff. Having that little bit of extra protection on our vehicles is going to go a very long way. And of course, the last noteworthy change I thought was really awesome was different outfits for the zombies. Now they're not all the same. Big Mama and her beautiful blue dress. But now the zombies have different outfits on. You know, we got the white dress here. We got the red dress here. Big Mama's got her beautiful gray on this one. Purple. Different variations of the zombies. I think that's a pretty cool touch. I think they pretty much all got new outfits. So it's really nice to see things switched up a bit. And we're not looking at the same zombies over and over and over again. I thought that was a really cool addition. And one of those things that just makes the game a little bit more enjoyable is everything's been graphically upgraded and more visually appealing. So again, these are just things as a very casual gamer that I found were kind of important about the 1.0 update and the full game release. So according to the roadmap and the patch notes, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming in in the future. I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to go check it out for yourself. Like there's a lot coming into the game. These are just the things that I found that were noteworthy. And I wanted to show you guys as the game's coming out today with a 1.0 release. But if you have any questions for me, leave it in the comments. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Thanks a lot for hanging out with me. I appreciate each and every one of you and I'll catch you in the next one.